Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you on Sunday. I'm actually in the office about to leave and head to the gym, but I had to talk on this topic. I've sit on it for a couple of days now. Uh, I finally got to watch, I think Thursday night, um, or was it Friday? Friday night. I finally got a chance to watch uh, The Closer, uh, the Dave Chappelle uh, special on Netflix to see what everybody was uh, talking about and to see you know what I got from it if it was along the lines of what I thought it was and it was everything I thought it was uh, you, e you either get the type of comedy that Dave Chappelle does or you don't uh, if you're looking for surface uh, comedy that triggers you you probably won't laugh a lot but if you kind of laugh at subtle shots you'll get the surface stuff that he delivers that everybody gets but you'll also get the fact that he did that and you know it's not going to be a triggered laugh but you'll get him like yeah he, he did that he's brilliant at it um and so he gives a lot of social commentary in his shows in his in his stand-up routine and he's done that over and over again this special isn't the first one the one before that wasn't the first one he's done it consistently and he even went back and showed what he had gave the messages in the previous one in this one uh so i'm like okay there are lots there's a lot of talk about canceling dave so i said okay well i heard he defended uh the baby is how it was put out over social media. And uh, I'll give you my take on that. I heard that, you know, he had said some things about white women and he had said some things about the certain members of the LGBTQ community and he had uh, angered some people and there were demands for uh, the for Netflix to take it down and that even some people, some people within Netflix had stepped down and resigned their positions based on it or whatever. And even, um, I thought it was so Dave Chappelle and the way he responded to the efforts to cancel him. And I'm gonna talk about all of that and I'm gonna do it hopefully within 30 minutes or less. That's the goal, that's what I'm shooting for because I really need to get to the gym, but I just had to go ahead and get this out of the way because tomorrow is going to be an immensely busy day for me. Um, I know for some people it's uh, Columbus Day. I damn sure uh, will not be celebrating Columbus Day or any of these other ones. Um, but anyway, before I get into that, you know uh, that we are doing major work and that's some other things, some partnerships we're doing. If you did not check out um, the uh the teacher's uh, episode from yesterday uh, with Sister Latavia Mabella Jingo and what she's doing at the Her uh, Camp, uh, which is an unbelievable thing she's doing in Indianapolis. And they're, living, they're teaching everything that, I mean, you gotta watch this because a lot of people are talking about being independent of the system she's doing it and she's showing other people how to do it and we have that conversation and we talk about some pretty intense things a couple of things you're probably gonna have to go to the rumble version of the video to get it out because i had to edit the youtube version but if you want the whole raw version you have to actually go in the description box and click the link to go to rumble and hear the whole thing but either way you're going to get fire so check that out but remember we need your support show the support uh, show your love. Don't forget to check out how you can sponsor space in my 25th book. Um, and all that information is in the box. I don't want to get too caught up in all of that. I want to get to the topic. So I'm looking. I'm saying, okay, what's all the heat about? What's all the smoke? Well, the first thing that the LGBT community is going to have to learn, especially in today's culture, in today's society, is that you can't consistently bring the heat and not expect spoke. Uh, the idea that people are gonna actually lay down and let you just roll over them behind a mind-manipulating uh, agenda isn't gonna work. Now, 
two things that Dave Chappelle has said, and I want to. Uh, I don't know if I have the other one, but uh, I know I can paraphrase it. One I actually have, and I'm going to pull it up, and I'm going to read it second. But the first one is real simple. It says, I support anybody that writes to live their life however they want to. But actually, what I'm concerned about is how much do I have to participate in the building of your self-image or in the establishment of your self-image? And that's powerful. Because what it's saying is that I don't have a problem with you living your life, but I don't have to go along. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to be a part of it. I can accept it and give you all the space you need, but I don't need to participate. And that is in direct uh, opposition to uh, something I shared uh, maybe a month and a half or so ago where a sister was on and saying that if you won't date a bisexual person or marry a bisexual person, you're homophobic. And I'm like, how in the hell have we gotten here? But that's the idea. If you don't completely buy in, not just give me the space to be me where I'm safe and ain't nobody trying to harm me and nobody's discriminating against me, that's not good enough. What, what I want is I want everybody to sit up and say, I'm just, you know, they're good with it, just like they're good with what And no one is uh, no one is uh, obligated to do that. What, what we are obligated to do is respect your choice, respect your decision, respect your lifestyle, respect your assignment. However you feel you got to where you at, we have to respect that. We don't have I, I don't have to argue what I feel about it. I, I, I can simply say if asked, I don't agree. I don't go out and, and, and approach gay people in my family and say, you know what, you, I'm just so sick. I don't do that. I don't conversate, I don't get in, and we have great relationships because we live life how you're supposed to live. Not everybody's talking about their sexuality in real life except people who are trying to push their sexuality uh, into someone else's main idea of how they're gonna live their life. That's not your job. Just like you want your space, give me mine. It's real simple. But what's going to happen is, and I, I said this today, is that the LGBT community, LGBTQ community, and that's as far as I'm going. You can add all the rest of the letters you want to add. I'm not doing that. Uh, enough is enough. I get it. It's you know, it's a lot of people with, with with issues and concerns that feel they're part of the community. That's cool. But I can't keep up, and I'm not going to do it. I, I I'm stopping at Q. Just just I'm just am. Love it or leave it. But hey, look. Guys, do you. But what happens is, and I said this the other day, what you're about to find out is something that all, all bullies learn. Eventually, the bully ends up with a black eye. You keep pushing people, eventually they're going to get tired and they're going to push back. And I'm not talking about physical violence, so don't go off trying to make no big issue about that. I'm talking about people are going to start coming at you the way you're coming at them. They're going to start pointing out fallibilities. And I think a great deal of why a lot of people are angry is Dave Chappelle, in an unbelievably genius way, killed a bunch of the darn bull crap that spewed out there in that show. But let me read to you what else he said. He says, our culture has accepted two huge lies. The first is that if you disagree with someone's lifestyle, you must fear or hate them. The second is that to love someone means to agree with everything they believe, say or do. Both are nonsense. You don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate, period. End of discussion. It should be end of discussion. People disagree with people all the time and love them. I don't agree with everything my children do. I don't agree with everything my wife does. But I love her in an unbelievably powerful way. And she, she'll know what I don't agree with. And I know what she doesn't agree with. I know what she doesn't like, and she knows what I doesn't like. I don't like. Why is it that there is this group of people that feels like if you say anything that is an opposing opinion of what I believe, you hate me, you fear me? No. First of all, a phobia. Again, I would I, I will share this definition at least one more time. A phobia is an irrational fear, not just a fear, but an irrational fear. I've given many uh, an, uh, analogies to point out what it is. I love to use arachnophobia because most people are afraid of spiders. Arachnophobia isn't simply being afraid of spiders. Most people are. Arachnophobia is having such an irrational fear 
that the behavior that comes from that fear is without question irrational. Here's an example. Uh, the average person who's afraid of a spider, if a spider runs across, across the floor and comes close to their feet, they'll raise their feet up or they may even jump up on the sofa. Not irrational, just the fear of coming in contact with a spider for whatever reason they may fear spiders. Okay, here's arachnophobia. A person who has arachnophobia sitting around watching a television show and a picture or a film clip of a spider comes on. They break into a cold sweat. The heart rate starts to race. They literally lose the ability to function in a normal way. They, they, pay, they become paralyzed, they jump up, they run. It's a spider on a screen. That's arachnophobia. No one that I know has a phobia when it comes to uh, the LGBTQ community. What I do know are there are some people who uh, at, at varying levels disagree with it. They're within their right to do that. What we are not in our right to do is to harm, malign, and marginalize those lifestyles. I don't believe in that. I, don't, I, I, I believe in humanity. I believe that whether I disagree with you or not, if you are not directly attacking me, I'm not going to attack you. Now, if I see you as a direct threat, all bets are off. And that's not going to be based on your lifestyle. That's going to be based on you coming directly for me. So anything I ever talk about that's associated with that is not your lifestyle. It's how you may be coming at me or those I love, how you are doing things. And again, it's not your lifestyle. It's your behavior. And what happens is we are not going to stand by and allow you to sit up and justify your behavior by guilting, shaming, or trying to intimidate us. We're going to have to come to a medium where we simply say, do you, we're going to do us. And you have to be willing to accept some of the things you're going to say and do that we don't like. And you're going to have to be willing to accept some of the things we say or do that you don't like because that's the way it goes. But we're not going to back down and lay down and sit up and pretend that we like something or agree with something or 100% all in on something that we're not. I am not going, I have never, and that's the craziest thing. I don't know about other racial uh, constructs and, and, and their cultures coming up, but black people coming up, the vast majority of us come up in the church. And if you come up in the church, you're exposed to homosexuality out the gate. And if you're like me in a musical family where you grow up and you're not only in the church, but you're in the choir and you are a part of the musical makeup of what's happening, meaning you have musicians in the family, you have vocalists in the family, and you grow up, you definitely exposed to it. It's not something we're afraid of. We've, we've seen it, we lived it all our lives. It's a part of our community, it's a part of our culture. We, we, it, and it was never, so it was never um, in, uh, in the closet for most of them. We knew, everybody knew. Nobody was caring until you start trying to make it be something we had to be a part of. Do you? I'm not sitting up making nobody think like I think sexually. Period, and I get it. You know, in my case, it's the, it's the mainstream dominant thought. So I, don't, I guess I don't have to, I, I get all that. But my thing is, as long as I'm sitting up saying, do you, ease black, ease back player, just give me my space, I'm letting you do you. You come in my space, now you're violating my, my comfort. Now you're violating whatever. I don't have to explain to you why I don't agree with it. That's another thing. What, what, I don't understand why you don't explain. I don't have to. If I feel inclined to, normally I'm explaining to the people who are sitting up and trying to understand where they stand in it. But trying to explain myself to someone but why I don't agree with them, I don't owe you an explanation. I don't agree. But anyway, Dave Chappelle. Moving on, because I know it's a bunch of people that literally lose their freaking mind because of how I uh, narrate my channel, and they want me to get to the point.
you know, talk about Dave Chappelle. Nobody give a damn about what you think. Well, you probably need to go to another channel. Uh, again, I, I, I built this. I've been doing this on YouTube for a minimum of, what, almost 12 years. Uh, I've built channels, had channels snatched away from me and had to rebuild. I know the audience that I want to speak to, and they know me. And I'm good with those who can't. Uh, and my crazy, my, what's crazy to me is I can't find a channel in our makeup where people are getting on and going right to the point. All I ever see is people sitting, spending the first three minutes welcoming people on the chat. Hey, Gloria. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? All right, and sipping on stuff. They're not starting right out the box. At least I start talking about something. I'm not sitting up there telling everybody hello. I would like to say hello to everybody, but that's not that's not me. And no, I don't like that. But if I want to watch what they're saying and hear what they're saying, I got two options. I can sit there and sit through that or wait for them to finish their live and come back and fast forward. For most of the stuff, I'm uploading it. So it's not even live, meaning that you can fast forward to the meat of the discussion and hear exactly what you want to hear. It's a slight inconvenience, but hey, that's the beauty of technology. But anyway, that probably pissed you off more. Anyway, but so why are people mad? I'm going to tell you why I'm mad. Because Dave Chappelle killed so many of the arguments that are being made now. First and foremost, he established that under the true definition of feminism, he's a feminist. I thought that was brilliant because he defined it real simple. A feminist is a person who believes in equality for women. Equal pay, equal opportunity, equal footing. No discrimination, no mishandling, no sexual abuse. He says, under that definition, I'm a feminist. Now, what that does is immediately highlight all the other bullshit that so-called feminists are throwing in the mix for multitudinous reasons and agendas. So they're not happy because he called out the BS off the top. Number two. He pointed out racism and white privilege within the LGBTQ community. In other words, while blacks will always be blacks, whites within the LGBTQ community, when being gay doesn't benefit them, can always refer back to their whiteness. They have two things to weaponize now. They have their sexual orientation they can weaponize because they've developed some unbelievable advances and advantages to protect them in a relatively short period of time when you look at the fact that blacks have been struggling since 1619. So more than 400 years, blacks have been struggling to find footing in this country that we have yet to find. Now they told us we had it. They told us we had it way back in 1964, but the truth of the matter is, it was all sleight of hand. It was all, we're gonna say something, we're gonna do something different. The same thing they did to us when they told us we were free in 1865. But they did not give us what they promised to give us. They did not even allow us to move into our own world in, in, in means of operation. They made black codes after they set us free, supposedly, in 1865. The black code said you couldn't own land. The black code says that you could not get jobs in certain industries. The industry, industries in which over the last several hundred years, you had developed an area of expertise beyond what most white people were capable of, which mean you would have been employed before the white person because you were more skilled for it, which meant that would be more unemployed white people. So they said you couldn't have it. Then they turned around and said, well, what we're going to also do is find a way to make money off of you and put you back on the plantation legally. See, because the 13th Amendment actually said slavery is outlawed except for in the instance of uh, uh, criminal conviction and imprisonment. So if we can find a way to criminally convict you, we can put you back on the plantation, which will ha is what happened in uh, what we now know and, and refer to as uh, convict leasing. In other words, we're going to make things that are almost certain about black living felonies. Criminalize, we criminalize your existence. How do we do that? We said, okay, we're going to make vagrancy laws. Well, you already made a law that said I can't have most of the jobs that are out there. So that means there's a good chance I'm unemployed. Now you've made a law that makes being unemployed illegal. If I can't give proof on a uh, six-month or an annual basis to show where I've been working, I can literally be found guilty of vagrancy, which was a felony, be locked up for up to 12 years, and then be leased back to the uh, plantations that I had been freed from. So it was slavery by another name. See, we've been fighting for this way longer than the LGBTQ community, but the LGBTQ 
TQ community has made way more progress in a very short period of time. Dave Chappelle points that out, another genius point, where he says, hey, I'm jealous of the LGBTQ community. Most black people are jealous of the LGBTQ. Why? Because, hell, look how far y'all got in such a short period of time. Y'all will way more party power than the black community, which is much larger than your community. And so he points this out. You're not victims. It's another thing he's pointing out. You're not victims. Stop playing victim. And this isn't an insensitivity to some of the things that people go through. And he gets to that part. That's the beauty about this. Because most people will say, well, you don't know what gay people deal with. I actually do. I counsel gay people. I've had 30 plus gay clients in the last three years alone. Over 100 over the last 20. I have gay people in my family. I have gay people very close to me that I have to maintain a relationship with me. They're that close. And so it's not about hate or fear. I love my family members to the end. But I have a right to sit up and say, hey, I ain't with that. But I love you. I got you. What you need? And you better not mess with them or you're going to feel me. And the same thing with them. So the idea that there's some kind of hatred going on, especially from blacks. We done, we, we've been around this our whole life. We talked about this in the teachers yesterday. We grew up around it. And matter of fact, for those of us who are 50 and above, we grew up around and in, 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 in a time that, that's between 50 and 60. We grew up a time during the sexual liberation when all of this started to become, hey, I'm setting myself free. I'm able to sit up and speak and be who I am. We grew up with that. It's not new to us. We grew up with it. We watched it take place. We grew, some of us were born in a time where a lot of things you see now wasn't allowed. We, we actually experienced it becoming mainstream. We ain't afraid of it. Y'all stop it. But, oh, back to it. Dave sits up and, and points out, okay, you guys have all this power. You have done some unbelievable things. We're actually jealous of you, if anything. We don't hate you. We don't fear you. We would love to know how you're able to do that. And I know how you're able to do it. It's called concise agenda, protocols, behavior, having an enforce, enforceable behavioral code. And the thing is, you got to understand that there are literally tears of that. You also got to understand that you got to have certain players on the outside uh, who you make allies with. There are a bunch of different things. The strategy was unbelievably uh, un unbelievably genius, and, and, and it's done. And, you know, we've actually suffered as a result of it because when it went before the Supreme Court, there were certain things that we had won in the 60s that were actually struck down by the Supreme Court, I want to say about four years ago. While they were getting their rights, we lost them. It's cool, 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 cool. So then what, what, what else did I, what was I able to find? Uh, okay, how white people, okay. Uh, I talked about how he destroyed neo-feminism. And again, you got to watch all of this because I'm not going to tell you everything about how he did, but he went after neo-feminism. Again, by first of all, establishing by the dev by the simple definition of feminism that he was a feminist. So am I. I believe in equal rights. As a matter of fact, people who know me say I cape for women too much, uh, especially black women. That's where my love is. I'm always going to have black women elevated above anything because that's my love. Uh, I don't sit up and want to oppress anybody, but hey, if it comes down to you and my people, it's my people all the time. You got to have something you're loyal to. You got to have something you're dedicated to. You got to have something for which you're willing to stand. And as we said yesterday on the teachers, you got to have something for which you're willing to die. And if you don't, then it becomes real difficult because then you start to move around and find your comfort zone and you start to compromise your convictions is what, exactly what, what Dave Capet said. I will not compromise my convictions under no circumstance. I will not ask you to compromise yours. We will have to learn how to exist in, in this world without having I mean, without having identical convictions. It's been done for millennia. Anyway, we're moving on. Oh, and this is where he just sit, let's just literally kills it. And I will talk about it a little bit uh, what he did. He stood up and he said, in his delivery in his presentation in his show, he ultimately destroyed the transphobia argument about him. And he, he left it open for the vast majority of us. But what he did is he pointed out the fact that he knew personally um, someone who was transgender. And 
that person had become close to him. It was somebody that was at one of his shows, and ultimately he, he met him, and he kept in contact with him, and he invited him to do a show for him when he was back in San Francisco, and they bombed, they bombed horribly. But then they set out in the show afterwards, which most people who bombed would not do, and they cheered for him while he did his show, and then ultimately they started an exchange during the show, and he saw her brilliance, or his, however you want to refer to it, but he saw the brilliance of this person and realized that they were funny in their own way, and the show was a huge success. He decided to coach that person. Well, when uh, the LGBT community came for Dave, this person stood up and defended Dave, and guess what happened? They turned on that person. And within six days of that happening, that person jumped off a building and committed suicide. And see, that's the part of this whole thing that people don't get that I do get. So um, I never speak derog derogatory. I never come for them in that way. I just end up saying, ease up off me. I have a right to say I don't agree. But I will never impede upon who you are or try to harm you. Or try, to, but anyway, it was the gay community, the LGBTQ community, that went for her when she defended him because she was defending him from. And there's gonna be people that get mad because I use I'm just I'm I, I, you know, get mad, goddammit. I don't give a fuck. How I'm tired of trying to figure out how to say it. I'm gonna say whatever, and and and, and if whoever pisses off, the hell with it. Uh, cause nobody's going to be happy. Everybody's pissed off. And, you know, and that, that's one thing that I'm really getting at right now. I'm not getting at that point where I'm tired of trying to f shape and cut. That's why I got the rumble channel because it's getting so bad around here that people are looking to freaking be offended. They're literally looking to be offended. You know, Hey, Let's find out what this person said so we can find something. My whole thing is live your damn life. But anyway, that person jumps off a building. And not only does you, you can see the pain in Dave's face when he's talking about it. This dude starts a fun for this person's daughter. Now, he, he makes a joke at the end where he says when that girl becomes 21 he's going to personal he says he hopes he's still alive because he's going to personally give her that money and he's going to tell this this daughter of the person's name that he gave was Daphne something but he was going to tell this person I knew your father and he was a hell of a woman and of course you know it was a joke but it's also a play on the reality as far as he sees it and see the thing is you can't force people to refer to you exactly how you want them to refer to you can't oh the other thing he touched on was the the infusion or the intrusion of people who want to declare themselves as women who weren't not born as women into uh the world of women who have bore children have had to deal with menstrual cycles since early in life and all these things that others who were not born that way will never experience and that's a sore subject and he stepped on it. He stepped on it. He definitely stepped on it. But the thing is, I think that in demanding respect for yourself, that comes with being able to respect others. And I think that women right now, women who are biologically born with female genitalia and all of the other elements and components that make them female, who are naturally predisposed to female attributes and such, are highly disrespected right now. They're being pushed in the corner and they're being made to accept certain things and, 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 and they're having people who can't possibly know what it feels like to be them take a piece of who they are. And these people are demanding that they are allowed to do so without ever thinking about the other side. You want somebody to feel your pain. You want somebody to feel your struggle. You want somebody to feel where you're at. But... You're not willing to give the same latitude consideration to the other side. This is a give and take thing in reality because nobody's going to win all out in this thing.
Nobody's going to dominate and totally shut down. Nobody's going to stop people from, from identifying as what they want to be at. But nobody's going to sit up and force the entire collective on the other side to accept it. It's not going to happen. That's not where we're going to find equal footing. What we're going to find equal footing is the ability to respect the difference and to respect one another. And the problem that I know a lot of women are having is with everything, especially black women, with everything that black women go through, here's another situation that they got to deal with where they aren't being acknowledged as who they are and that other people can come in, not go through what they went through, and be recognized at the same level that they're recognized at. And what do you use to actually bring that point home? And then I'll be done, because I'm at the 30 minute mark right now. What do you use to bring that point home was this. Within a year of Bruce Jenner becoming Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner was declared, or Caitlyn Jenner was declared to be the woman of the year. Never ever experienced a menstrual cycle. Never ever gave birth to a child. Never ever had somebody decline them work or underpay them because of their gender. Didn't have to deal with any of that and was declared within a year of, of this experience being the woman of the year solely because they decided to actually come out and do it. You're being praised for your boldness. I get it. You're bold, you're brave, you're, you're coming out and you're speaking your truth. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. But don't step on nobody else's while you're doing it. Don't do that. On that note, I'm out of here. I went a minute and 30 over. That is awesome for me. Look, don't forget to support the work we're doing. I'm out of here. I love everybody. Uh, whether you think so or not, that's your business. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah.